So Monica, if you'd like to uh, share your audio and video, um, we'll get started. Okay, so Monica, I understand you're having trouble with your camera. Um, would you would you like to um, get Lorenzino to come on if he can share your slides uh, while while you're getting that started? Ah, Monica, we, we see you now. Sorry, sorry about this. Um, apparently, uh, yeah, I was having some problems with uh, with the camera. It was not being recognized. Okay. Uh, we uh, saw uh, your screen flash up a moment ago. Okay. All right. So um, I'm not sure I will be able to make myself and the presentation. Yes, that, that will be clear. Can you see my that will be clear. at the moment? Yes, we can see you and we can see your slides. Okay, so I cannot see you, but I, I, I okay. will start with the presentation. Right so, um, thank you very much, John. Um, um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, API, uh, API Days for organizing this very interesting track uh, on uh, connected government. Um, since uh, the connectivity potential of APIs, and in particular of government APIs, is um, a topic that the European Commission is analyzing for uh, more than two years at the moment, and most likely for quite some time to, to, to come. Um, I'd also like to, to, to thank the, our, our counterparts from uh, that side of the world uh, for, for their uh, very interesting presentations. Uh, uh, since the topics and context um, are very timely uh, to, to several aspects of, the, uh, of our current research activities. Um, and uh, then I will, I will uh, indeed uh, introduce myself. My name is Monica Posada. I am the project leader of the API team of the Digital Economy Unit of the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. And uh, I'm here today uh, with he is an expert, a senior expert on APIs in government uh, realm, and um, he will be able to join um, the discussion panel later on. Um, so uh, the Joint Research Center, for those of you who, do, who doesn't know, is the European Commission Science and Knowledge Service that carries out uh, uh, research to provide uh, scientific advice to, to policy making in, in the European Union. Um, uh, the unit I'm working uh, at is the Digital Economy Unit, um, and it investigates the, the ongoing of the digital revolution and information and ICT technologies, um, and how it's affecting uh, the economy and, and, in particular, the society. Uh, most specific, more specifically, uh, uh, the API team is uh, working on the um, data and platform economy uh, uh, team uh, under this uh, digital economy unit. Um, I will now go to the outline of the of the uh, presentation. So, um, so you know, APIs are indeed uh, bits of technical infrastructure, uh, but still, um, my, on my slides, I will not cover uh, big technical implementation details. But I will instead uh, be setting um, the API. Uh, European cost, co policy context. I will navigate you through uh, the main findings of the, uh, of the uh, several studies that we are currently uh, doing on, on the topic. And um, I will uh, introduce you to, uh, to what
what kind of uh, technical, organizational, and poly essentials we are focusing at the moment um, to give it a European uh, uh, context uh, to the APIs. Uh, finally, I will provide you with some examples of, the, of our observations or, uh, on, on how APIs are foundational uh, for the connection between government and all kinds of societal actors, meaning type citizens, the private sector, the, uh, the, the, the academia, and also uh, systems um, uh, among all of them. Uh, and at the very end, I will be making the link on how, um, what is the, the, the background of uh, the digital uh, identity implementation across all the member states um, in, in, in the Europe and how this will uh, uh, most, most likely strengthen the connectivity uh, role of, of the APIs. Um, I hope that uh, you can find some, uh, some information of your interest and that uh, we can continue this dialogue because, uh, beyond uh, this virtual conference. So um, let's go now to, uh, um, to understand um, why are um, API uh, relevant at the policy uh, level? So why are, um, why are they so relevant? Uh, APIs are the connective tissue of the digital society. No more, no less. Uh, the vast majority of data exchange in the digital era happens through APIs. Um, APIs connect ICT components in ICT infrastructures. Therefore, they technically enable the integration of system and actors in increasingly complex digital environments. But the in, indeed, they are only a, a, a tiny bit of, of the entire puzzle. Without digital assets behind them, um, they are nothing. And without applications that make them in one way or another human consumable, uh, they are nothing indeed. So all in all, uh, APIs are necessary but not sufficient indeed to, to and, and you all know it very well. So how is that possible that APIs are relevant for policy? Uh, actually, it's for three main reasons. Uh, uh, first is the hyper-connectivity demand. There is uh, digital ubiquity. The digitization is making everything connected to everything. And the APIs are connectors that technically enable these uh, connections. The second point is the flexibility and agility demand. So technologies are advancing at a very, very fast pace. Uh, the data is the new electricity. You can power a plethora of digital products with, um, uh, with, with, with this data, but you need to, to, to put them in, in, in uh, to, to connect them. And um, the APIs are these solutions that are flexible enough and easily to adapt to uh, the new data sources and the technological updates. Um, uh, also because they are, the APIs are modular, reusable, and very easily scalable. So uh, these provide flexibility both at demand and supply side of uh, the data and functionality uh, provision. The, three, the third aspect that makes it uh, really relevant for, for the digital era is the, vulnerab the vulnerability. The APIs are doors to digital infrastructures. Uh, so therefore, the security and resilience of digital environments will also depend on the robustness of the API infrastructures of organizations. Um, taking these three uh, important aspects into account, um, I'm going now to talk about uh, what is the policy context then for, for APIs. So um, the policy relevance of API, Ooh, sorry. The policy relevance of APIs um, uh, is linked uh, to its capacity to provide flexible access to digital assets and also for its connective role um, among different actors and systems. So uh, in this, in, with this in mind, API infrastructure can support policy design, policy implementation and policy monitoring. Uh, regarding the policy design, the European Digital Strategy contemplates three main actions, artificial intelligence, data strategy, and industrial revolution. Um, 
So APIs will play an important role as technical and organizational enablers of the uptake of AI and the sectoral and SME innovation, which will be indeed a foundational component of the blooming of the European data economy. On the implementation and monitoring side of policy making, for instance, I can give you examples of current uh, European regulations such as the public sector information and open data and the PSD2 directives that implicitly and explicitly acknowledge the relevance of the APIs. Um, in particular, the open data and PSI regulation sets uh, that the both dynamic and high value data sets um, should be public sector data sets to be published through APIs. And uh, for the monitoring side, this very same regulation envisages to monitor certain aspects when it enters into force. So the provision of requested information can be facilitated through correctly managed API infrastructure. So um, what, uh, what are the analyses that the GSC has done uh, so far? So, um, uh, The um, different direct, European directorates at the European Commission, in particular uh, Connect, DigiConnect, uh, the um, uh, Digit and the GRC, are collaborating on the analysis of the relevance of APIs for digital government and are inter and exploring how to best invest on API adoption to ensure the largest socioeconomic benefits for the citizens and uh, the society. Specifically, we are currently involved in two projects. The um, APIs for the Gov project, who has just uh, finished, and that has analyzed extensively the digital transformation of government, the APIs in the context of digital transformation of government, and the API strategy essential for public sector innovation. The, in a nutshell, the um, APIs for digital government uh, analyzed the, the relevance of APIs um, in three main aspects. So it analyzed the value, opportunities and challenges of the adoption of APIs uh, bring to government, so the why. Um, it evaluated also the current status of API adoption in government in Europe, so the what. And it proposed a potential roadmap for a coordination, coordinated adoption of um, APIs in government. Uh, detailed from a, from a thorough, thorough uh, analysis of the extensive um, practices literature, so the how. Um, as a continuation of this project, um, there is this uh, API for IPAs study that will further investigate more technical essentials uh, such as um, discoverability, how to enhance uh, discoverability, uh, how to best manage the life cycle, of the APIs for organizations, in particular the government organization, and how to ensure that um, security and privacy um, aspects are, are taken into account. Um, organizationally, the study will analyze legal and organizational aspects of APIs, such as the transfer of responsibility and what kind of service agreements the government can um, establish with um, any kind of partner that um, hooks to the API infrastructures of the organization. Um, uh, so um, I will now uh, navigate through the main conclusions of the API for digital government uh, um, uh, study. So uh, what we see is that uh, regarding the why, uh, the APIs, we, we understood that the API strategies are crucial for the wiring and the steering of digital environment. Why? Uh, because APIs define interactions among digital actors and systems, and in particular, they define what digital assets are exposed to whom and under which conditions. Um, this information has implications at three managerial levels, technical, organizational, and governance. At the technical level, uh, the APIs facilitate the creation of digital environments. So APIs servicify the access to digital assets. Um, data is not anymore a product, but a service. 
Um, APIs are modular, reusable, and easily scalable. And uh, these provide digital solutions with high flexibility and uh, virtually unlimited reach. Uh, then the security, of course, um, the APIs are, are a vulnerable point in an organization and therefore should be taking uh, very good care of it. Uh, at an organizational level, the APIs can provide crucial information on the use of the resources. Um, on access and dynamics of the digital interactions and on processes performance. Uh, this information is key to design the transformational roadmap for organizations. At the governance level, um, API, uh, APIs can streamline data flow, um, flows to better inform decision making. Um, and therefore, APIs can facilitate uh, the control and dynamic um, and monitor of the dynamics among actors and systems in digital infrastructures. Um, uh, so, wait, sorry. Uh, why APIs in government? So we found uh, two main uh, ways that API can support uh, the digital transformation of government. One is the public administration innovation, and the other one is the policy making innovation. So, the, regarding the public administration innovation, uh, API strategies can support uh, the organizational change management uh, along their transformation process. We have evidences that uh, public organizations at local, uh, national, regional, and local levels um, assess their digital maturity by measuring different technical organizational aspects of their API infrastructure. Um, we can, I can give you examples uh, such as France, uh, the region of Lombardy, and the city of Milan. Um, I think I, will, I have some examples in, in, in following the slides. Um, APIs uh, do facilitate flexible, effective, inclusive, accountable public service provision. We have found evidences on how API-enabled digital environments catalyzes change in public organizations. And uh, by being more flexible, effective, and even more inclusive, we have examples, for instance, on the region of uh, Lombardy that uh, has managed to cross-fertilize several of their public services with data coming from other internal or even external actors. Um, and they have set up uh, di uh, digital solutions on tourism and, and mobility based on API infrastructure. Uh, they have also improved the efficiency of the emergency response uh, services by integrating uh, systems um, of different uh, departments through APIs. And they have even uh, managed to design adaptive digital service solutions that enable for instance, pollutant cars to still drive for a number of kilometers through an API-enabled service called Moving. So uh, the transition between um, uh, uh, um, the, the, the pollutant cars towards the, 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 the more uh, ecologically friendly cars, it's, it's, it's gradual, not sharp. Um, Another very important thing is that API enable government interactions. We have plenty of examples of it, uh, of how uh, APIs um, enable the internal connections between uh, agencies. For instance, the, 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 address, uh, the address agency in Denmark. And also uh, we have plenty of examples on how APIs enable the connection with external partners. So for instance, um, uh, Norway, Sweden, and, 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 and uh, the Netherlands have set up, are working uh, on, a, on, on, on a business registry that work together. Um, another example of how uh, the, gov the APIs uh, enable the, the connections between uh, the government and uh, external actors is uh, the government of Denmark, the tax authority, have uh, made an agreement with Airbnb uh, so that uh, all uh, the, the, the hosting in, in, in the platform um, is automatically um, uh, declared in the task office. So uh, citizens do not have to worry about how to declare those income, but uh, they just get it um, processed directly with the tax office. 
So <clears throat> regarding the policy making innovation, uh, indeed, uh, APIs confer flexibility to allow uh, the streamline of uh, information flows. So um, it will be easier to get access to the right information at the right time. Um, and uh, so these are very important aspects. Uh, moreover, um, we have uh, um, gathered and synthesized in this slide um, uh, the evidences that we found on, on the benefits and opportunities that API adoption in government brings uh, uh, to, to do the society. So on the benefits, we see that the, the um, uh, APIs improve access to public sector data indeed. Um, that uh, it fosters uh, innovation, it uh, 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 triggers efficiency gains, and uh, it enables the, the creation of digital ecosystem. And not only that, it also brings economic opportunities by stimulating entrepreneurship, but facilitating and reducing the cost of establishing uh, running business. And uh, it, all, it even uh, yield profit in, in, in partnered as stakeholders and trigger innovative financing, financing mechanisms such as co-finding and co-payment models. Um, so then we move to the uh, to the what. So um, what what we have uh, understood from from our uh, extensive analysis of the API landscape in in in, Euro in governments in Europe. So um, we have done a lot of case studies at local, regional, national, and multilational level. We have plan organized several expert workshops together even with uh, API days. Uh, and also we've done uh, quite a number of expert consultations. And we have extensively analyzed academic literature and uh, guidelines and good practice documents. So from, from this analysis, our main observations concluded that the API adoption um, is uh, already, I mean, APIs are already present in government infrastructure uh, at all uh, levels, so uh, pan-European, national, regional, and local, that API adoption is uneven uh, and, op and often not optimally coordinated. Uh, that uh, the, so far the API strategies are mostly covering operational and tactical aspects, uh, and, but already we, we've observed that uh, there are few cases that are already developing the digital ecosystem vision. Um, so we have examples such as <laughs> France has developed a national API catalog, Estonia has migrated uh, the web service-based architectures to REST. The Lombardy region has established a digital ecosystem structure in vertical realms, depending on how open uh, the, the data, the digital assets behind are. And um, Italy and UK have um, uh, adopted an API-first approach to, uh, to the, the development on, on, on digital solutions. Um, we have also uh, observed... So, yes. Monica. Um, yes? This, I, I, I don't... I don't want to cut you off, but the, the the points you're making here, I thought it would be mm -hmm. really good to bring uh, the other government technology organisations on at this point to talk about some of those uh, initiatives that you've seen uh, and some of the All challenges right. you, you've um, you've uh, you've encountered and how you, how you've uh, how you have addressed them um, mm -hmm. would. Do you have any final comments before I before I bring on uh, Kendrick and um, and Nick back onto the the screen? Uh, 